ready to start. Uh, so my name is Vito and I'll, I'll present my work with collaboration with Julia Zanon, Frederico Gadelli and Randy McIntosh from Universidade Federal de Minas Gerais and University of Toronto. An introduction first. Uh, the visual system is one of the most important human sensor systems, both in practical importance and in dedicated area in cortex. Its diversity of, in terms of area is big and there is still lacks in knowledge about its function. The aim from this work is to generate insights about how image feature relates to brain activity by analyzing a public experiment dataset. Uh, I'll show some details about the dataset I used, VIN1. The dataset was collected by Kendrick Key and Thomas Nacellaris in UC Berkeley. The authors published the, the findings in a Nature paper in 2008 and made it public in CRCNS. The, the fMRI data was collected in the posterior portion of the subject's brain covering occipital cortex and parts of parietal and temporal cortex. It set a set of 8,750 8, images were displayed to a virtual reality glasses while activations to the brain was recorded to fMRI. And uh, scan it. And so these are samples of the images. There are many kinds of images, humans, animals, landscapes, textures, buildings, and so on. Uh, now I'll discuss some of the results and the analysis we made on the data set. Uh, we first try to answer this question. Are there cortical regions that respond similarly to the images? And we gave answer to this question using a non-supervised approach with the k-means algorithm. We divided the data set into 10 clusters. In the figure, we see this division in a low-dimensional space obtained with TSNE for visualization. And so we have the, the, clusters, the cluster div division in this space. We then plotted these clustered clusters in a anatomical mask, and we see in all the cluster a sagittal symmetry. Uh, accord, this, this observation is according to the experiment design that showed the same image to both eyes of the subjects. And in most cases, the, the clusters are restricted to certain areas certain region, regions of, of the brain. <clears throat> For example, this one there is restricted mostly on V1. The, this other one, this other one that may be related to the ventral stream of information and so on. There, there are many others that don't have this anatomical co coherence and we hypothesize that the, these ones are, are related to distributed processing in the visual cortex. Uh, and then we try to answer these other questions. These other question. Are there groups of images that cause similar activity in the brain? And we use the same approach from the previous question to answer this one. And here we see the clustering from the images in, in the data set. We used five centroids this time. And here we see some a picture that organizes the, <coughs> the data. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, <coughs> this figure, we sorted the axis, the axis according to the cluster voxels horizontally and the clusters of images vertically. And we see patterns in the relation between some groups of images and the activation all over the brain. So in this group, in this image group one, we see a great, a high activation in all the areas. And the, in this group two, we see activations negatively in all the areas. We'll explore this further uh, later. 
uh, <coughs> and how does <coughs> sorry the next question we try to answer is how does image complexity relates to cortical activation uh, then, then then we use the border density as a complexity metric for the images and we apply the Kenny algorithm for for border detection and compute the border density summing the border border pixels these ones lighter lighter pixels here in this black images uh, over the the total pixels in the image and so we see that this image which has more borders more more white uh, light light pixels in the images will be considered more complex than this one of the the polar bear here that has less less borders we we then made some comparisons in uh, between the images in the and we saw that the pattern group né, we we classified the images in categories of animal nature person transport people building and we saw that the pattern category i'll show some examples later is the one which has most most of the it has the the border the, the more more high, higher mean border density all uh, of all the groups and we also see that this the same category has the the higher pro proportion in the voxel groups this one uh, in the the group one uh, here are some examples of this uh, pattern category which has uh, many many borders and many details so these are very complex images according to this this metric and we made a comparison between two image groups the one which has the the pattern category this this one in red and another that has not many pattern category and has a negative activation all over the images and we saw a a, a little but but statistically significant uh, a mean difference in on the border density and we can from this uh, say that the image complexity is related to an increased activity level on, on all over the the visual cortex for this subject extending the analysis we try to answer where which region is most is most responsible for this uh, difference in activation and we saw that only the cluster three group three has a statistically significant uh, correlation between the activation and border density the, the the group is illustrated here this group three and the inter interesting thing about it is, is that this group comprises a big amount of V1 area, about 30% of, of its volume. And, and V1 area is a area responsible for the first, for, for the lowest levels of visual processing in the brain. It's responsible for uh, extracting borders, corners, or orientations, and that's all all according to to the to the metric used here. And now I'll discuss some of results and show some proposals for next next future work. Uh, so first uh, we we should see how other images image feature metrics related relate to activation uh, using other feature metric may show relations present in other clusters this cluster here is related to to the ventral pathway it goes from v1 v2 v4 and goes down there from to the temporal inferior temporal cortex and 
features related to object recognition may 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 be interesting to analyze in this cluster because we may find find interesting patterns. And the dorsal pathway, this one here, we have some groups that may be related to this one, uh, using features related to spatial localization would 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 lead lead us to interesting patterns in these these clusters. And other future work is the is to find a, a mod to is to model the relation between image and brain activation using a convolutional neural net uh, and encoding model which takes as input the image and tries to predict the the neural activations on each voxel would mimic the the brain and we could make some comparisons between these two these two the model and the real brain and this would give insights both for the brain function and the model specificities and that's all i have to to say and here's some some of uh, some of reference. All right, thank you very much, Vitor. Uh, that was a really excellent talk. Um, it's great that you're able to re uh, kind of recapitulate some of the uh, known properties of V1, like this in, uh, elevated activation to edges and um, oriented lines. I think that's um, really says uh, a good a good. Uh, indicator that your method is picking up on some really biologically relevant features. So um, I like that. Um, so we Thank have you. time for questions. Um, we have time for questions if anyone uh, wants to post them in the Q&A. Um, I'm going to ask a quick question to start us off. Uh, what do you make of the fact that the diffuse, the, the pattern of activation that you see is um, so diffuse, uh, whereas we know that the act, that the um, visual system is oriented, at least in its most early components, um, into really discrete processing modules. So have you thought about that at all, or um, do you have an explanation for that? Well, I, I didn't have understand well the question. May, may you, may you? Uh, just that repeat? there's, um, so you when you looked at your voxel-wise clustering, um, you had mentioned that it was really diffuse um, and that you weren't seeing discrete, like kind of similar modules of activation uh, or like voxels that express sim similar, similarly, similar activations being kind of grouped. And I was just wondering if you wanted to comment more on uh, that particular observation. Oh, nice, nice. And uh, so we found many clusters that aren't so so cohesive, anatomically cohesive, but there are some that, that are very co co coherent. Mm -hmm. There are no no cluster that constrict some some visual region, but but there are some region some clusters that may be related to to some visual pathways or uh, pathways of visual processing such as ventral process, processing and ventral pathway and dorsal pathway. Uh, we that cluster nine has a, a nice nice view of nice relation to the to the ventral visual uh, pathway. But we, we have the, the, the that clusters that don't have a constricted anatomical location. We we think that these clusters are, are related to to diffuse processing in this area, both for feedbacks from in, in between areas and and maybe the flow of information between areas, uh, like a, a distributed distributed proce uh, processing this way. Uh, I don't think I, I don't know if I answered your question well, but. No, that was a really, that was a great answer. Actually, and uh, I did find that the kind of, uh, as you were looking, uh, some of your clusters, or some of your net, um, 
networks that you were picking up did have really well-defined clusters. So it was interesting that you got something of a mix. Um, so now we're going to have to move on to our final.